quality according to where it is found. Crude oil is a complex mixture of liquids which are separated out in a refinery. By refining, we get these main products, motor spirit, lubricating oil and greases, kerosene for light and power, fuel oil for heat and power, wet for candles, and bitumen for roads. By special chemical treatment, crude oil can yield important products for a great many other things, such as scents and cosmetics, paint, carbon black for tires, printer's ink, fruit spray. Supplies of crude oil are found all over the world principally in North and South America, Eastern Europe, Mesopotamia and the Caucasus, and the Far East. And Shell operate in many of these areas. It is not known exactly how oil was formed, but most people agree that it comes mainly from organic matter, probably from minute organisms which live in shallow seas. millions of years, these organic remains have been laid down and covered by layers of rock-forming sediments. This still goes on, and the earliest remains often lie thousands of feet below the surface. Great pressure and heat turn them to oil. Sometimes the oil percolates the surface above and escapes. Here is a burning seepage of oil. Surface deposits of oil have been used for generations. <laughs> Detailed surveys must be made from the ground. Geologists try to estimate from the rocks outcropping on the surface the likelihood of finding oil beneath. 
They are helped with age by age, waterfalls, glaciers, and rivers have worn away the surface to show what lies beneath. Scientists have found ways of exploring subterranean formations by exploding a charge from the ground and measuring the time the vibrations take to travel down to a surface which reflects them up again, it is possible to estimate the position of the oil-bearing layers deep down. But the only certain test is drilling. Today, nearly all drilling is done by the rotary method. That is, the drill is twisted round and bores its way into the earth like a gimlet into wood. The shaft, or telly, of the drill stands out of the hole and is set in a heavy flywheel called the table, which is turned by a powerful engine. The top end of the drill shaft is held in a swivel, which allows it to turn freely. The swivel and the sections of drill pipe are hung from a block and tackle, which lowers them as the drill cuts deeper. Since the hole is often thousands of feet deep, a drilling string is made up of long sections of drill pipe. When the bit has to be changed, the whole string has to be pulled out piece by piece. This drilling bit is badly clogged, which may mean that a new formation has been reached for which this type of bit is unsuitable. There are special bits for every sort of formation. This bit is used for cutting medium hard rock, this bit for soft rocks, and this bit for clay. As each length of drill pipe is lowered into position, it is wedged into the table by top, so that it cannot fall into the hole while the next length is being screwed to it. is swung into place, it is screwed tightly onto the one below by huge pipe tongs. Successful drilling depends on the driller. He knows almost by instinct what is happening at the bottom of the hole. He has instruments to show him the strain on the table and the speed at which the bit is turning. With the bit turning between 80 and 90 revolutions a minute, it is essential to keep it cool, so liquid mud is forced through a flexible tube. The drill pipe is hollow. The mud is forced to the bottom of the hole. It flows up again to the surface, washing the cuttings out with it. The rate of mud flow must be checked under careful control. For the mud blasters the sides of the hole and prevents it caving in. The weight of the mud keeps high pressure gases and water in check. So from time to time the pump engineer tests the mud to check its weight compared with the same amount of water. That is, he finds its specific gravity. Special tests are carried out by the geologist. Here is a test to find the amount of sand in a given quantity of mud. Too much sand will ruin the pump machinery. If the mud gets too thick, it will clog the bit. So a sample of mud is poured into a cylinder, and the viscosity is calculated for the time taken for measured quantity of the mud to run out through a hole at the bottom. 
As drilling continues, the geologist is able to map out the strata thousands of feet below. First of all, there are the small chippings of rock which are washed to the surface by the mud. These chippings are collected and taken to the field laboratory. They are dried and examined under a microscope the signs of fossils and other indications of the geological strata from which they come. Another way of mapping the strata is by taking a complete section of rock. A hollow tube with special cutters is used. As the tube eats its way down, a core of rock is pushed up into it and held. The core is broken up into short lengths for examination. Fossils give the geologist valuable comparative information about the strata found. This is an ammonite, which shows that the drill has reached Mesozoic rock, perhaps 40 million years old. This is a trilobite, which is found in Paleozoic rock, perhaps 400 million years old. The drill hole must be kept straight. So every now and again, a practical test is carried out. A brass cylinder is filled with corrosive acid, into which a small metal tube is placed. Cylinder and tube are then put into a torpedo shaped container called a go devil and lowered to the bottom of the hole to remain for about 10 minutes to give the acid time to etch a mark on the tube. If the hole isn't quite straight, the line will be etched crooked. As each stage in the drilling is completed, the hole is lined with chasing pipes, which are cemented home. These support the sides of the hole and keep out water. Right, we'll just have to move these over there. The derrick is taken away and the well is controlled by very heavy valves to withstand the pressure. And so the search goes on. Wells are drilled in deserts, in the tropics, and even in the sea. Often the wells are far from the coast and means of transport. Sometimes pipelines must be built for hundreds of miles 
to leave the crude oil to where it is wanted. Filters must be dug, piped, welded, and laid. <laughs> in the producing area or in the country where the products are sold. The finding is mainly a process of distillation. The various components of crude oil have different boiling points and are separated in special columns designed to use this principle. The main products then go through complicated purifying treatment. They are finally stored in tanks ready for shipment. Fleets of tankers carry the products to the markets of the world. Proceed to Melbourne to discharge part cargo. Expect to burst shall have on Tuesday. Sail to Portside. Discharge 3,500 tons liquid fuel. Discharge 2,000 tons fuel oil. 2,670,011 gallons gasoline. 3,950 tons gas oil Hamburg. <laughs> Gallons, 